There are a lot of monsters in the Godzilla franchise, as there would be in a franchise that's over 60 years old. Most had their time to shine before fading into relative obscurity, while others have become ingrained into the larger mythology, characters integral to the franchise's longevity, and no monster better fits this mold than the insect monster goddess, Mothra. First introduced in her own standalone film in 1961, Mothra was brought back to face Godzilla a few years later in the 1964 film Mothra vs. Godzilla, and since then she has become a massive force to be reckoned with within the franchise, appearing in over a dozen films, all of which helped her to become the second most popular monster aside from the Big G himself. The image of a colorful moth emerging from her cocoon as her twin fairy priestesses sing has become iconic, as has the love-hate relationship she's had with Godzilla. But what is it that makes Mothra such an endearing figure within the kaiju genre? What is it about her that makes her such a fan favorite, and gets even the most ardent G fans to root for her against him? To figure that out we have to take a look back at the film that started it all, because even at the time it came out, Mothra was a radical departure from your standard monster movie. While most kaiju flicks had the monster as the bad guy, stomping around the city and destroying everything in sight, Mothra presented audiences with a creature that was purely virtuous by nature. As the goddess of Infant Island, one of the few places on the planet left untouched by the modern world, her goal is simple, protect her people and her two twin miniature priestesses who communicate with her. When a greedy businessman scoops them up and forces them to perform for profit, Mothra hatches and begins a steady march towards Tokyo to save them. She doesn't arrive with malicious intent. Destruction is only a side effect of her godly power, her mere presence enough to blow cities away. Her mission is to save her fairies, that's all, and when she does, she leaves as quickly as she arrived, bearing no ill will against humanity, even if, let's be honest, we might deserve it. With all this, Mothra set a precedent, helping establish the concept of the good kaiju, a radical idea at the time, and a downright foreign concept in the West. When she went on to face Godzilla a few years later, she was the protagonist monster, the one the characters and the audience were meant to root for. She even had top billing, the movie is called Mothra vs. Godzilla, not Godzilla vs. Mothra, suggesting that just as with King Kong vs. Godzilla before, that she was more popular with audiences than Godzilla was at the time. She quickly became a staple of Toho's cinematic universe of kaiju films, and whenever the studio was desperate for ideas, they'd often turn to her with the hope of drawing audiences back. Part of her appeal is that in a roster of singularly masculine monsters, Mothra is the sole female member, and not just on a surface level. Femininity is inherent to the character, both in regards to her design and the overall mythology that surrounds her. Again, unlike most monsters, Mothra is not meant to frighten. Her original design turned an insect, which collectively are usually viewed as horrifying, into something beautiful. Instead, she is cute and fuzzy, which immediately elicits sympathy, and she she sports big, beautiful wings full of vibrant colors, all of which evokes vulnerability and openness, not danger, which are inherently feminine traits. This is what makes Mothra special. Most versions of the character portray her as being fragile and delicate. In the original Mothra vs. Godzilla, it only takes a few hits from Godzilla before she's done for, and yet she fights anyway, and puts up a pretty good fight all things considered. This is, of course, the core of Mothra's appeal, the fact that she is relatively weak compared to other kaiju, but she puts her life on the line anyway often sacrificing herself for the greater good. And sacrifice is another characteristic inherent to Mothra. She's done it so many times that it's pretty much expected at this point. Whether to protect her babies, her allies, or the earth itself, Mothra is always willing to sacrifice herself to achieve victory, because Mothra is inherently selfless, another feminine trait brought to a kaiju-sized extreme. In a world where her fellow monsters and the humans scrambling beneath them think of nothing but themselves, Mothra is concerned with the survival of the world at large. When the malevolent King Ghidorah arrived for the first time to destroy Earth, it was Mothra who convinced Godzilla and Rodan to stop fighting and combine their efforts to drive him away. And when they initially refuse, she goes off by herself, a mere larva, to face him alone. So powerful was her display of selflessness that it managed to guilt Godzilla and Rodan to come to her aid, and together they succeeded. Remember, Godzilla killed this Mothra's mother just one film ago, and now suddenly they're on the same side. From this point, Godzilla was 
was seen as a good guy, and we have Mothra to thank for that. Her actions changed him, and while he and Mothra still never quite saw eye to eye, Godzilla gradually softened his stance on mankind, until he became their full-blown protector. With regards to humanity in particular, she sees the good in them and protects them, even against themselves. This link to humanity is represented by the Shobijin, her miniature priestesses. They are able to communicate her intentions to mankind in stark clarity, and when mankind refuses to listen, they suffer. But when their interests align, a symbiosis is achieved, and mankind and Mothra become a powerful force for good, able to defeat seemingly insurmountable odds. All of this plays into the spiritual and environmental themes inherent to Mothra's character. In contrast to her fellow monsters, who tend to fall more towards the sci-fi end of things, Mothra is inherently fantastical. Spirituality and the symbiotic relationship between all living things is what defines her mythology. Her home, Infant Island, is often depicted as the remnants of a more ancient, peaceful time, where mankind was more connected to nature, but now tainted by the destructive habits of modern society. In the original Mothra, it is shown to be a magical place, where the inhabitants remain unaffected by the radiation of the atomic testing committed on the island. However, in Mothra vs. Godzilla, it is revealed to have been devastated by further testing. This, along with a duo of greedy businessmen's refusal to return Mothra's egg, initially convinces the natives not to have Mothra aid them in driving away Godzilla. It is only after the impassioned plea by Junko and Ichiro, who insist that we are all human and all connected, that the Shobijin and Mothra agree to help. This again plays into Mothra's inherent selflessness. She knows she will die in fighting Godzilla. But Mothra is no mere monster, because Mothra never actually dies. Like a certain religious figure, she dies and is reborn in the form of her children. This cycle of birth, death, and rebirth is deeply integral to the environmental spirituality of the character. Just as with Mother Nature itself, her energy is never destroyed, it is merely transferred, reborn into something new. Mothra does not fight death like so many of us do. She welcomes it, because it is inevitable, and indeed even a necessary function in achieving a balance with nature. If all we do is take, we only ever end up destroying everything. Sacrifice, the transfer of energy, is needed for the good of all living things, and Mothra is this truth made manifest. She is wise beyond our years, a true goddess, virtuous and pure. Perhaps it's no surprise then that her relationship with Godzilla has been so antagonistic over the decades. While the two are sometimes allies, most of the time they are opposed forces. If Mothra represents the feminine side of nature, the gentle benevolent one that sacrifices and protects mankind indiscriminately and without thought, then Godzilla is the masculine side, pure destructive brute force, the one that punishes and casts aside mankind indiscriminately and without thought, reminding us of how small we are. Together they represent the yin and yang of the natural world, one side taking, the other side giving, both necessary to achieve balance. And though they do fight a lot, they always come together when a greater opposing force threatens that balance, because the Earth is their home, and they both will fight with whatever it takes to protect it. It's a fascinating dichotomy that I think lies at the heart of what makes Mothra such an integral part of Godzilla's mythology, and why she is indeed the queen to his king. A protagonist is only as good as their antagonist, and whichever way you look at it, Godzilla and Mothra make for perfect opposing forces to each other. Together they are equal opposite guardians of the Earth. While Godzilla exists to humiliate us and put us in our place, Mothra is there to counter and uplift us, to give us hope. She is unique, a special kind of monster, in that she isn't a monster at all.